Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining me today on our webinar. Um, and a special thank you for joining me on what I'm sure is a very hectic week for everyone uh, with the holiday. Um, but today, we're going to be doing uh, something unique with our webinars. If this is your first time on one of the webinars, welcome. I'm very excited to have you. Um, if you have any questions throughout, there's a little chat bar in the GoToWebinar panel. Feel free to, you know, type along and, you know, ask a question. I'll get to them all at the end, so if I don't answer it right away, I will get to it at the end. Feel free to tweet along with the um, handle Brand Yourself. My name is Sabrina Clark, and I am the uh, I'm on the marketing team here at Brand Yourself, so I'm very excited to present this to you guys. If you've experienced one of our webinars before, welcome back. We're going to be doing things a little bit different. Um, we're starting. Uh, this is the first of our four part webinar series, which is all about building an online presence that search engines love. So, building an online presence that'll actually rank well when someone Google's your name. Uh, today is the first part where we're going to actually be laying the foundation, um, so building the initial foundation of your online presence. Uh, we have four parts, like I mentioned, coming up in the series uh, today uh, is laying the foundation. Then we're going to get into search engine optimization basics. So how do you, once you built something, how do you make it search engine friendly? Ongoing content creation, which is a huge part of maintaining your online presence, and then advanced techniques. Um, there, and that's particularly going to be uh, about dealing with negative search results. Uh, they're always at Thursdays uh, at 2, 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. If you can't make any of them or um, one of them, we will be sending the recording following each session, so you will have access to the whole four-part series. Um, and we're going to get started. So laying the foundation of your online presence. The first thing that you want to do is you really need to know what you're dealing with. And you're, if you're not fully aware of your on, current online presence, where it stands right now, there's a few ways that you can figure it out. Um, the first, excuse me, I went forward a little bit. Um, you're going to want to categorize your results. And they typically fall into a couple of categories aside from positive. You know, obviously if it's your own website, that's positive, but there are several common categories that they can fall into. The first being my man Frank here, what's a negative mugshot. You know, a negative could be a mugshot, it could be negative online reviews, it might be something that someone wrote about you that's coming across the wrong way, negative press, it could be any number of things. Um, there's also what we call the irrelevant. So these are things that aren't necessarily negative, you know, it's not a mugshot, but it's really not helping your personal brand. You know, when people look you up, it's, you know, it's really not showcasing who you are professionally. It might be results from a high school track race that you ran, but now, you know, 10 years later, you're a marketing executive and you really don't want people finding that because it doesn't reflect who you are professionally. Um, the other uh, common one we get is the, hey, that's not me. And that's sort of, you know, my man Pete here, the whole story of Brain Yourself coming to be was Pete was being confused for a criminal of the same name. So the results weren't about him, but they were having a negative impact on his own online reputation. So those are kind of the categories that we find in addition to having positive stuff. So how do you, you know, categorize your own search results? Um, the first way that you can do it is, of course, use your Brain Yourself tool. Um, if you haven't done this already, when you sign up for Brain Yourself, your free account, you are able, you know, we'll show you your search results and you can go ahead and label them positive, um, not me, negative. Um, and basically what this does is it keeps track of what the work that you need to do to get them all to be positive. And it also keeps it top of mind what you have going on online. So if something new pops up, we'll let you know and you can decide, oh my God, that's not about me. Like I better do something or great, you know, that Twitter profile I've been really working hard on is now ranking on the first page. Thanks brain yourself for letting me know. Um, and then once you tally all those up, you're going to get a search score. And this is John Doe's search score. So he had a B minus. Um, he definitely has some room for improvement. Um, and then there's a new feature that kind of snuck its way into our tool that really helps identify your current online reputation. And that's right here. You notice the 
to potentially damaging search results. Basically, you know, we took all of the data from all of our users. Um, you know, we've been tracking search results for years now. We've tracked millions of search results, and we've noticed a trend in terms of the negative ones. There are certain websites um, that people always mark as negative. You know, maybe it's a ripoff report or mugshots.com. And basically, we were able to take these sites and cross-reference it with everyone else's search scores or search results and be able to tell you right off the bat, hey, you have potentially damaging results out there without having to actually go in and mark it as negative. So John Doe here has two potentially damaging results. And they are, one is on his first page. It's spot number 10. And the other is on spot 50. So it's probably buried around page five. Um, and this is really important because it keeps you very much aware of what's going on out there aside from your first couple of pages. You know, you might be very focused on what's happening in the first couple of pages, but if you have something that's, you know, lurking on page five, you might not be concerned with it right now, but if you notice it start moving up, you know, maybe you log into your Brain Yourself account and now it's on page, um, now it's on spot 30, then you want to know, you know that you have to do something else. So this is, you know, one way that you can discover your current, online presence so you can act accordingly. And the next way, way is you can use incognito searching um, or private browsing. So Google Chrome um, has what we call an incognito mode and basically you access it by going to file, new incognito window, and then you're able to search um, in incognito. And what that means is it basically takes away your search history and things that Google Chrome has learned about you, your behavior, that might impact your search results. So that's the reason why if you Google, Google yourself right now, you might have different results than what Brain Yourself sees or what a colleague sees when they Google you. So by using incognito mode or private browsing, it gives you the best unbiased um, picture of what's out there about you. Okay, so now that you know what's out there, you can start to lay the foundation of your online presence. You know, you can act according to what you found. If you're dealing with something negative, you know you're going to be combating that negative. If you don't have anything out there about you, you know you really need to lay the foundation of a strong online presence. If you have, you know, a really common name or maybe you have a few things out there that you just need to optimize, then you can build your foundation of your online presence accordingly. So these are the steps to do it. And this is what the meat of our presentation today is going to be about. So building an online presence is a three-step process. And if you've been on some of our webinars, you already know this. Um, but first, what you want to do is you want to create high-quality websites and profiles that are about you. So this is a personal website, um, social profiles like your LinkedIn, Twitter, Google+, Facebook, other sites like SlideShare. Um, then once you have built them, you want to optimize them so that they have the best chance of ranking when someone Googles your name. And then you want to continuously update them, and that's phase three. For the purpose of today's webinar, we're going to focus on the create part. I'm building that online presence, and in the next parts, we'll cover the rest of the process. So building the foundation. The first thing that you want to do is build high-quality websites and professional profiles. And you notice in the, in the image here that um, this man, Chris, you know, he has a personal website. He's got several supplemental um professional profiles. They all have that same look, that same feel. The personal brand is consistent. So we're going to cover how you can do this for yourself. The first thing that you want to do is inventory the content that's already out there about you online, especially if you already create it. Um, so dig up all those social media profiles. Even if they're not active, you want to have an inventory of it. Um, take a look at what's um, any articles that you were written in, any mentions, um, even if they're not ranking in your search results. So let's say, you know, the Brain Yourself tool didn't find it because it's not in your search results. Um, maybe do a really quick, um, you can set up a Google alert for yourself when new content 
pops up, but hasn't necessarily been introduced into your search results. Um, you can, you know, take, there's plenty of tools out there that you can use to dig up past content. Uh, but you want to take an inventory of everything because you can actually use a lot of it. So if you already have a website that's completely outdated, you might not necessarily have to start from scratch, but you are going to have to update it and keep it fresh. Um, so once you have inventoried everything, you want to start collecting all that content and write a really good set of bios for yourself. And this is where you're going to figure out how do you want to position yourself online? You know, how do what do I want people to find when they come across? Do they want to uh, learn about my professional life? Do they do I want to have them focus more on my interests and things I do outside of work? You know, who's the person I want to be? Um, I, I recommend keeping your resume in front of you um, when you do this. Um, as well as a LinkedIn or any other resource out there that you've used to compile information about you. Um, and then you're going to want to write, I have here a good bio, but you want to write several variations of a bio. Um, there's a million and one ways to do it. Um, obviously, it's unique to you know how you really want to come across, but a really great way to start a bio is with an intro sentence that really tees up who you're about. Um, this is kind of like your tagline. So for John Doe, you know, he might be writing a bio where he's a marketing executive in New York City specializing in tech startups. So right by reading that, you kind of get a sense of what he's about. We could also maybe add an interest. You know, John Doe is a marketing executive in New York City specializing in tech startups with a passion for um, cooking. And you really understand then who John Doe is about. Um, as you go throughout the bio, you want to then highlight accomplishments and achievements. Um, you know, he's written over 20 publications. He was recognized by his alma mater. He's co-authoring a book on social media. So he's talking about things that he's, he's worked on, he's achieved, and also what he's currently working on. So you want to make sure that you just really figure out, you know, spend a couple of, uh, a couple of minutes soul searching and really figuring out what you want to do um, and how you want to come across. A few things, you want to write it in the third person and have a few variations for different profiles. This is for a few reasons. One, from a search engine perspective, duplicate content can hurt you. So that means if you have the same, you know, four paragraphs of bio and you put it everywhere on the web, it could actually negatively impact your search results because Google wants to see fresh and unique content. On the other hand, you know, different sites and profiles um, have different audiences and you want to, you know, craft your bio as such. You know, your LinkedIn is much more about your professional accomplishments and achievements and everything that you've done from a professional standpoint and what you hope to do. Um, and so it's a little bit more formal even as well. And that's a lot different than if you set up, you know, a Tumblr page that's about, you know, how you like cooking and about recipes. That's going to be a little bit more personal and about your interests in cooking and the culinary art. Um, I will say one thing about this. This is probably one of the more difficult things that you're going to do. Um, it's very hard to write about yourself, but once you have these bios, it's very easy to then go ahead and set up sites and websites. This is really the foundation of building your online presence. It starts from here. So spend some time here. You're going to want to do that because this is what people are going to be reading when they actually come across your stuff. Then the next thing that you're going to want to do is you're going to want to set up a personal website. Um, so this is a website um, about you. Uh, it should be a central hub for any information about you on the web, what people should find out about you, what you want them to find out about you. You know, you have complete control here to shape what people think about you. So absolutely use that bio that you created. Um, and have an about me section on it, you know, you should be using this website to direct people to, maybe it's in the signature of your email, you put it on your resume if you're looking for a job, you could put it on a personal business card, but really direct people here as the hub for info about you. 
um, relevant experience and accomplishments. Um, again, you know, this can be in part of your bio, but if you're in the real estate space and you want to talk about, you know, your career in, in real estate, you might also include, you know, some properties that you've sold, some major, pro you know, deals that you pass through. Then definitely include contact info and the best way to reach you. I think that this tends to be overlooked a little bit, um, and it's it's somewhat obvious. But if someone comes across your website and it's very much focused to you know what you're doing professionally, and they're really impressed by it, you want to give them a way to contact you. There's a number depending on where you set up your website. You know we recommend WordPress, which I'll get to in a second. Um, there's a number. Pretty much any site that you use to set up a website will allow you to add a contact page. So even if you don't want to put your email address or your phone number right on your website, you can put a contact form page so they can just submit their information through the contact form and then you'll get notified that someone contacted you. So you don't have to you know, worry about putting your contact info directly out there. Then also include press, awards, accolades. I know a lot of people get concerned that they feel like they're bragging, but there is a way to go about it where, you know, you're just showcasing authority, really. You know, you want to say, you know, I've won X number of awards. You know, I've made these uh, promotions and accomplishments in my field. You know, this is why you should hire me or this is why, you know, you should work with me. Um, so definitely there's a way that you can do it tactfully without seeming like you're bragging if you're concerned about that. And then interests, hobbies, organizations, show, you know, show your personal side. Even if this is meant to be, you know, a website about your, you know, let's say you're a real estate agent again. We'll use that example. It's meant people want to work with a real person. So share your interests, your hobbies. If you volunteer on the weekends, put that. People are interested. It provides common points for people to talk to. And it also humanizes your website and makes you seem like a human, which you are. Um, so you definitely want to go ahead and do that. From a technical standpoint in setting up your website, there are so many sites out there. You know, We recommend WordPress at Brand Yourself. Uh, it's free to use, it's easy to use, and it's SEO friendly, which means that it does rank well in, in Google. Um, it's easy to set it up so it's SEO friendly. I mentioned here that there's even an all-in-one SEO plugin that you can add to kind of make sure that your website is as search engine friendly as possible. But there are a number of other tools out there, you know, Tumblr, Squarespace, Blogger, um, there's so many. Um, if you already have a website on another platform that isn't WordPress, it doesn't mean that it's wrong or you know that you should switch. It's what's right for you and what you're comfortable with. We just tend to recommend WordPress separate yourself. Um, so the next webinar is going to cover more. It's going to go really in depth with the search engine thing. Um, but I do want to you know talk a little bit. Um, or rather the SEO thing, but I really want to talk about a, a few points because when you actually are setting up your website, you're going to want to keep SEO in mind. So I don't, I'm not jumping ahead and going into SEO and we will go into it much more in depth in the next webinar. Uh, but when you are setting up your website, you want to make sure that you're structuring your site well, um, including a mainline navigation. A great thing about WordPress and a number of other platforms that use this too, but they have pre-made themes, and these themes are already structured well. Um, you don't have to worry about coding or, um, you know, having too much experience. You can literally go in and kind of plug and play. You can just put in the content that you want with the theme. Um, so make sure you're structuring your site well, keeping it up to date and relevant. If you are. You might be thinking, hey, I have a website. I built it five years ago, and I've never touched it. Um, you want to keep it updated with new information, make sure it's relevant and up to date um, from a search engine perspective. But also, you don't want someone you know, coming across your website, and it's all about the job that you were doing 10 years ago. And make sure that you're including your name throughout key areas of the website. That kind of ties into what I was getting at with your bio and writing it in the third person. Make sure it's in the domain name, which I'll get to in a second, in your body, in the body of your content. Um, just make sure your name's on there because that'll signify to search engines that the website's actually about you <laughs> and that it'll actually help it rank well when someone Googles your name. 
So this is an example of our co-founder, Pete. Like I mentioned earlier, this is his website. You'll notice it's very clear that it's about Pete Kistler. He's a software designer and a musician. Um, you can notice in the bottom is his navigation. He has press, interests, music, blog, contact. So he has, you really get a sense of who Pete is here. And this is actually built on web, WordPress with a WordPress theme. Um, and basically, you you understand who he is. There's information about his work at Brain Yourself, his interests, his work as a musician. There's a blog aspect to it, a contact form, so you can contact Pete if you want to work with him. Um, so you really get a sense of it. And just to give you an example of you know setting up a really good bio, uh, this is his about page. So this is where you learn about how he started Brain Yourself, his story. You'll notice that his his full name is throughout, um, but it's also natural. I know a lot of people get concerned about their bio, that if they write it in the third person, it's going to seem stuffy um, and not creative or personal. But this is a very, um, and you can kind of read through it as I, as I, as I talk, but you can really see it. it's a very you know natural uh, bio. It's not stuffy at all. The third person thing definitely works and you really get to know all about Pete. Okay, so once you've set up a personal uh, a personal website, you want to set up your social media profiles. Um, so these profiles are so important when building an online presence for a number of reasons. One, they rank really well. Um, because you can control them, you can keep them up to date, much more so typically than a, a standard website. You can um, really build an online presence here. You know, that's where you can really get personal, um, which is great. So you want to get on the right social networks. Um, there's a number. These on the top are the top four uh, that we tend to recommend because they're high quality. Facebook, Twitter, Google+, LinkedIn. Uh, but there's so many other ones out there, and you really want to create them based on what your goal is. I've included a few on the bottom. Uh, we have a YouTube, um, Pinterest, Vimeo, which is another um, video site. And over here is SlideShare. SlideShares, you know, we use it a lot at Brain Yourself for our clients. It's a presentation sharing platform. Um, it allows for a lot of rich media. They tend to rank really well. So figure out the right ones for you that you want to be on to really craft your personal brand. Um, and then get on the right ones for your industry. Um, for an, this is important for a number of reasons. Um, and right here, you know, keeping with the real estate theme, these are examples of how you can also get on real estate based social networks. So you have Zillow and Trulia, which are actually now the same company, but they're separate platforms still. And House, you know, the reason House is important is, you know, a lot of clients, potential clients are on House. You know, they're looking at it for their own um, modeling their own house, looking at new neighborhoods, things like that. So take a look at your industry, do a little research on what some of the people are on. Um, you're going to want to be on these sites because that's typically, you know, what potential clients and customers are going to expect. Uh, you can get business from them. Um, and also, it really helps build out your brand online in line with your industry. Um, so, you know, these are examples of real estate ones, and there's also additional ones than the three I shown. But there's also, you know, for your own industry, you'll find that there are social networks that just are more specific. So do a little research, ask a couple colleagues, even doing a Google search, you can say, you know, top social media sites uh, for the legal industry, top sites for the marketing industry, for business. Um, and kind of get on those. It's really important. Um, in our platform, so if you sign into the Brain Yourself Do It Yourself tool, these are some of the social media networks uh, and profiles that we recommend. And this is from a perspective of, of SEO. So these are the ones that tend to rank really well. And if you are using your tool, these are the ones that we provide those boost, boost steps for or steps for how to get them to be as search engine friendly as possible. Um, so you can see we recommend a lot. There are so many out there. Um, there's even more that aren't on this list. So if you are on one that isn't on this list, it's not necessarily a bad thing. We just probably didn't include it. Um, but the important thing is that 
you know, you're getting active on them. It's so much more important to be active on, you know, six or eight social media profiles or even four really great social media profiles that you pay a lot of attention to, you fill them out completely, you're really active on them, than to sign up for 20 social media profiles that you never pay attention to because no one could possibly manage 20 social media profiles for themselves. Um, so keep that in mind as well. Um, and if you're getting started on a new site, it's really important that, um, one, that you fill it out completely. So if, you know, let's say you pick one from one of our recommended lists, and you want to, you know, let's say for all intents and purposes, we're setting up a Twitter account. You know, you don't have one. You know you should have one. Everyone in your industry seems to be on it. In fact, everyone in the world seems to be on it. Um, so you, but you, you don't know how to really get started. So first, what you're going to want to do is, you know, set up your account, fill out all the fields that you possibly can. Um, Typically with a lot of, you know, larger uh, social media sites, I know Twitter actually does do this. They'll recommend a few people for you to follow so you can get started and get a sense. I think Pinterest does that as well. Um, but follow industry influencers. And it might just be as simple as, you know, if you're in real estate, um, you know, searching on Twitter for, you know, real estate and seeing who the common people show up are. Follow them and see what they're posting to really get a sense of what, the community is about, what you should be sharing, what's popular, what's going to lead to engagement. Um, that's all really important. And then engage, you know, make friends, like things, retweet them, favorite them, pin them, depending on, you know, what your what social media profile you're using. Uh, but just get engaged. That'll really help you get a feel for the site as well as, you know, building out your own sphere of influence and then start sharing your own content. You know, if you write a blog post or are mentioned in an article somewhere, or, you know, maybe your company did something really big that you just want the world to know about, share your own content online and look for relevant hashtags and, um, and the like, you know, hashtags don't extend now beyond Twitter. They're on Facebook now. Um, you can use plus ones for Google Plus. Um, and there's a number of other, um, I know Tumblr is hashtags. So there's plenty of other ones out there. Look for what's trending and maybe comment on it or things like that. This is all a really great way to you know get started if you have no idea what you're doing on a social media site. And then make sure that you are submitting it to your brand yourself profile because we'll give you boost steps on how to get them to rank higher. And we'll, you'll also get recommendations for the next social site that you should join. So you can submit it directly if it's one of our recommended profiles or you can paste the link here and hit submit. So that was pretty much what I had. I do see a couple questions rolling in. If you have any questions about laying the foundation of your um, online presence. I will get to it at the end, but just real quickly how Brain Yourself can help. Um, we have a number of tools and services. Ooh, and I see it kind of run over, so I apologize for the formatting there. Um, but we have our do-it-yourself tool. Um, everyone should be on the free one because it, it, what it, it'll really do is um, provide you some tips that you can improve your online reputation. Um, it'll guide you through that complicated process and really simpli simplify things for you. It's free, um, which is why at least everyone should be on that. Or you can upgrade for some premium features, um, of which we just announced that you know, you'll know you have access to exclusive content and training, which is great. Um, so that's our do-it-yourself tool. From our services side, we have two types of services. The first is our head start. So we'll actually build the foundation for you. So if this webinar made you kind of nervous and thought, and you're thinking, oh my God, I can't, set up a website, I don't have time, I you know, I really don't want to just set up the social media sites, I just kind of want to have them, Head Start's really great for you. What we'll do is we'll figure out the best way to position you online, you know, we'll write those bios and figure out, you know, how you should really come across online, and then we'll build your, websites, your website and profile for you um, and give you kind of the game plan so you can manage it going forward. And then in the middle, we have our concierge service, and this is where we do everything for you. You know, we, we build it, we update it, and we manage it over time. Uh, this is the one we recommend if, you know, you completely don't have time for this. If you're dealing with a negative, which does require a lot more hands-on help and attention, um, or if you're really looking to build out that personal brand um, and really give it all you got, that's what this concierge service will do for you. 
So I'm going to jump into questions. Um, again, if you have any questions about what I covered, please feel free to put it into the chat bar. Um, as always, we offer a free personal branding consultation for everyone. Um, so this is a really good tool if you know you're stuck, you really don't have anywhere, you don't know where to start, you think you might be a good candidate for concierge or one of our services, but you're not sure. Um, all of those use cases and more, it, you're a really good candidate for this personal branding consultation. It's free. Um, there's no you know obligation there. Even if you decide to not work with us, you still have this consultation um, as a resource will basically you know take a look at your results and give you some very specific steps for what you can do going forward so you know we'll provide you some you know kind of a roadmap for what you should be doing next to improve your online presence and you can sign up for it you know two ways one directly you can schedule it on our calendar you know just type this link in it's just bit dot ly forward slash by consult it'll take you to a scheduling page and you can book your consultation right there or you can email me directly at s clark at brain .com and i'll make sure that you get scheduled in we'll also be emailing out this webinar to everyone following uh, so if you want to go back or have any questions it'll be coming from my email so you can absolutely email there but definitely i recommend taking advantage of the free personal branding consultation so I'm going to jump into some questions. If you have, um, if you have any, please feel free to, you know, type it into the chat bar. I do want to keep this one kind of short and sweet for you guys, uh, but let's get going with some questions. Okay, so the first question is about the theme. Um, is about the slide where I showed Pete's website, and they're asking what the theme was on WordPress. Um, so this one is actually a premium theme. Uh, it's called Accurate. Um, it's really slick. Uh, we really like it here at Brand Yourself. Um, but basically what that, um, that theme is premium, so you do have to pay additional for it. But if you just want to get your toes wet, um, you can use a number of free ones that WordPress has. Also, I will, you know, keep in, I will say with the Accurate theme, there is some custom coding on that one, especially on, um, you know, Pete's as well. Uh, so you might not be able to, you know, with no experience, you know, get exactly what he has. But there are plenty of other free sites out there and tools and templates that you can use if you're looking to get something similar. Um, and also, if you're really interested but are very leery about doing it yourself, if you sign up for our Head Start service or our concierge, we can get something very close to that or something else that you had in mind. Um, so we'd be more than happy to do it for you as well. Okay, so someone, um, the next question is, I'm interested in pushing down negative info about myself. I have a common name that is taken on social media already. How should I select a name? on social media. Okay, so this ties into also domain names as well. Um, so let's say, you know, you definitely want to um, get started. You're all excited to set up your social media account and your name's taken. Um, well, you can, I would recommend getting a variation of it. So the important thing here is that you keep your name together. Um, so John Doe wants to stay together. A really great example is my own. Um, when I signed up for Twitter many, 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 many moons ago, um, Sabrina Clark was not, was taken. So I couldn't get the full handle Sabrina Clark, but it's really important that you keep your full name together. So I went with Sabrina Clark one. Um, it's not sexy or anything, uh, but what you might also want to be able to do is, you know, go with a, a qualifying word. So maybe you do, um, for Twitter example, it's, you know, John Doe tweets or John Doe online. Um, you could do John Doe one or John Doe two. Uh, so I would definitely, you know, you can go with a variation. Just try to keep your name in there um, and also keep your name in any bios that you set up as part of your site as well. Okay, so someone, okay, so we have a couple of people that joined late. Um, the recording for this session and any session that we do as part of this webinar and really any webinar we do is going to be emailed to everyone um, in a few hours. We just got to get the video to process first. So don't worry, you know, you haven't missed anything. I also see some people had some confusion with signing in. Um, we did start um, at 2 p.m., 
Eastern time. So if it doesn't fit with, you know, a different time zone, I understand that. So um, we do make the recording available. So if the times don't work out or if you have to cut out or go to a meeting or something like that, um, do an early uh, 4th of July getaway. Uh, we absolutely understand that. So that's why we email all the recordings out. Okay. Oh, and someone, you know, is signing off saying, you know, thanks again for the ideas. Have a fantastic day. Day, you guys have a fantastic day as well. Thank you for listening in. Um, okay, so someone asked about can one create a new website on WordPress, work on it, set it up, etc., before going live and maintain one's old website? Um, I think what you mean is can you create a new website and kind of work on it but not send it live? Um, and that's absolutely accurate. Um, it's what you know, on WordPress, it's called maintenance mode, um, which basically, you know, if you're not ready to, you know, send it live just yet, you can keep working on your website. And when you're ready, you can basically publish it live. Um, if you have one that's already out there, it's okay if it's out there. Um, you are working on a new one. Um, so definitely you can do that as well. Okay. Um, Okay, so someone asked if I, you know, if I wear multiple hats, you know, a consultant versus, you know, one type of consultant versus another type of consultant, will the free consultation help um, or would that be a longer conversation? So I'm a little unclear here um, about what you're specifically asking. If you want to follow up in the chat bar, but I think what you're getting at is if you are wearing so many hats, how are we going to figure out that one central personal brand? And that, you know, we're very good at doing that here. You know, we're, we, we are experts at it. You know, we love figuring out how to position people on the web. And we work with a lot of rock stars that are wearing a lot of hats. So we will figure out a way to streamline your personal brand without diluting what you're doing in any capacity. So I would recommend the consultation. Um, if that wasn't what you were getting at, um, please just follow up in the chat bar. Okay. All right, I'm just going through. Okay. Okay, so someone asked about Instagram and how it ranks. So Instagram's interesting in the sense that um, it doesn't really appear, appear in search engines. What you'll notice is that, you know, you might see individual Instagram photos ranking. But as of right now, you know, because it's such a mobile-based app, it doesn't rank in, you know, desktop search engines quite well. Um, I imagine, you know, it's going to move towards that. But right now, you know, if you are building out that personal brand, um, I do recommend still being on Instagram because it's great for building brand, especially um, if you have a very visual, um, you know, personality, you know, if you're in culinary and want to share images. Another thing to keep in mind is that you can link your Instagram to other accounts like Facebook and Twitter and things like that. So if you have a presence on Facebook, on Instagram, I would link your site so that it also shares on your other social media sites and that stuff will show up in search engines. So don't just discount it because it won't rank that well, um, but use it as part of an overall strategy, if that makes sense. Okay. So I think um, we're going to take uh, one more question. Um, I'm so, uh, I apologize for the delay. I'm, I'm just going through. I'm noticing that there's a lot of very in-depth, specific questions, uh, which is great. Uh, I'm more than happy to answer them. I would recommend setting up the consultation just because um, they're a little complex, so I don't want to take up everyone's time on the webinar, but I will get to them. So by all means, I would recommend setting up the consultation or you can email the question to me directly and I'll get you a more specific answer. Um, okay, so someone asked if they have, that they already have a web page on a server, um, but they're looking to make up they're asking if they can make other websites. So this is, you know, uh, you know, this is getting a little complex, uh, but 
I would recommend it. It's a, it's a good strategy to create what we call niche sites. So if you have, you know, let's say you have a personal website um, and then you have a, a website that's more catered to your small business and then you have a website that's more about your interests, you can have all those as long as you're linking them together properly um, and making sure that you're indicating to search engines that they're about one another um, and that everything's about you basically. Um, and I would recommend having that one main site still that has all of that information about you. So let's say you'll have that one personal website that has, you know, a link to information about your business and information about your interests and this and that. Um, just make sure that you still have that one hub about you and you'll really have a good foundation. Um, I would recommend, set, again, setting up that consultation. Um, if you want us to take a look, um, it's what we call link structure, which is a huge part of um, SEO, and we'll actually get to it in the next webinar. Um, all righty. So someone, I'll take one last question, and then we'll wrap it up to keep it short and sweet. Um, but someone asked if how much does the consultation cost? Um, it's free. <laughs> so and no obligation. So if you, you know, whether or not you decide to work with us, you'll at least have that work roadmap. Um, if you do work with us, obviously, you know, then you're in our services realm. But to have that initial call, it's free. Um, it's a great, you know, if you're thinking about working with our services, I, I highly recommend um, scheduling the consultation. That way you can figure out, you know, if it's a good fit. In fact, you know, we don't work with anyone um, without talking to them first because we don't want them to buy anything that's, you know, that they don't need or that they're on the wrong package or things like that. So um, I would definitely, you know, schedule that consultation call. Okay. So that is all I have. Um, I do, again, I see a couple more questions that are very specific. So I would recommend either setting up that consultation or um, shooting me an email and I'll make sure that you get, I direct you to the right person to get you the answer. Um, but thank you all for joining me today um, in the first part of our series. Next week, we have SEO basics. So now that we've built our foundation, we have the bones of our website, we have social media profiles, we know how we want to position ourselves on the web. Now we're going to make sure that you that search engines are actually going to rank your content well. And that's going to be Thursday, um, July 9th at 2 o'clock Eastern time. I hope to see you there. Um, Again, we will email out uh, the recording if you're unable to make it. But thank you all for joining me this week. I will see you next week on our second session. Um, and have a great and very happy and safe 4th of July weekend. Um, and see you next week.